For years, I've, I've taken uh, bark shields off, off, uh, off of the trees and taken uh, uh, coolamins off and different other, other things are used uh, from the red gum and the blue gum. And uh, we were talking about doing a canoe, and uh, I said, yeah, I think I can do one. And I took them off with, a, with a wedges and, that and lifted them and dried them out and done them up, took all the top bark off, painted them, done all the markings in them. And it's all through like, like some other with experimental, because certain times of the year you go and take the bark off, because you can't do it in summer. That bark is stuck to the tree with like glue. So you do it in winter when there's a lot of water around. This one we done here, he took a bit, a little bit of encouraging on this side because this is the side of the sun. But the other side was very easy. Cyril, my nephew up there, he was, he was a part of it. Well, when we were doing I asked him, I said, you would like to come and help me take it off? And uh, he said, yeah, so... That was an opportunity for him to learn. And also, not just for him to learn, but me to teach. And in this one here, the school children was involved. The Aboriginal children run the school. They was all involved in that. So, as you can see, the preparation of the tree, the smoking, the ceremonies, asking permission of our ancestors, getting organized to get other people there to watch the process organized to get people there to be involved to to and like traditional tools and that that we used there wasn't any <laughs> we used a cherry picker <laughs> and today i'm not built to climb trees you look at the size of the trees and now we had to get the bark down me and cyril went up on a cherry picker <laughs> so there's there's tools of today you use that's my modern charcoal <laughs> texture. So, all of these things you you, you know you use it's easier for us to use. We'll use it because we're still doing the same, going through the same process as taking that bark off. The process of removing the bark, and within the bark and the process, there's also patience. People want to be pushing you. It was like a bunch of little kids were sitting down at the bottom there. How long now? You know, how long are you going to be? But it was, you know, to some kids, but there was, there was a, lot of, a lot of older people too. And I said, well, it'll come off when it's ready. And taking the bark off itself, taking, taking that off, we done it with the wedges, knocking the wedges from either side and lifted it very slowly. Took our time. When you're up there, it's like you're in forming a relationship with that tree, the spirit, the energy in that, in that tree, because you ask permission of the spirit of that tree to take that bark off, and you're not going to damage the tree, and it's not, not going to die. When we was looking at the tree, when I seen it, I knew it straight away. It was the right tree, and it was the right shape. The trees down that way are massive trees. Out in the middle of the paddock, you see them, they're Giants. They see you. <laughs> yeah, I like the look on Cyril's face. <laughs> yeah. So that's how it was. There was a number of people here. There were, there were some people here from America. They came over and they, they to be a part of this too. As you can see, the size of that bark there now coming down, that light bit, that's where it was, was stuck on the tree. Everywhere around the edge would come off easy, except there. But to, to do something like this, when you're up in the tree there, it's, it's personal. But when you get down and all the people around you, it's a, it's a community thing, a community effort. That end up there, that's where it split just a little bit. We tied that and laced it with, with uh, raffia. And we used a modern tool too. We drilled holes in the end with the drill. These are the stakes, what they put around the trees as protection. 
we used that because we needed to put the yuki over the, over the fire, let that, let that dry. And then we took it from there, then in a, in a shed at David's place, and we built fires in the 44-gallon drums and just shut the door. And the heat was contained in there, and it dried it right out, and then we, we uh, done a bit of work around the edges and that. But this is looking at the country where we lived, where the people, they drained all the water, all the water, fresh water, even today, is in drains that's gone to the sea. We was able to travel hundreds of miles around that area in our canoes. They're not seafaring vessels. Therefore, the backwaters and the rivers and going out and collecting swan eggs and that, and the, up and down the Koorong, doing a little bit of fishing. But they got us around. And they've been there like everyone else's for thousands of years. Ha <laughs> ha 